All right, we're going to work on putting the swatch kit together. With your swatch kit, you should have all your samples, tape, this is what's called a linen tester, a CD, and an information sheet on the CD-ROM. Keep the information sheet, the CD-ROM, and the linen tester, but put them aside because we will be using those in 3600, not in 1600, but you will be using them, so hang on to them. With your swatches, in the swatch kit you have a master list of fabric swatches. And in the master list there are different groupings. First grouping is fibers, the second grouping is yarns, the third is basic weaves, fancy weaves, knits, films, finishes, dyeing, and printing. We are going to start assembling the kit. When you look at the kit, it starts out by saying C48, C57. While you're assembling the kit and putting it together, the first time you're putting, the, as you're putting the swatches in the swatch kit, ignore every line that says C. Only look at the number of lines as you are initially assembling the swatch kit. Okay, the first swatch is number one. So, with my tape, I take the first swatch, and be careful that these all stay in order because it's very important. First swatch is blue and it is linen. So I'm going to mount the swatch. And the important component here is a fiber. This is swatch number one. The fabric name is just given as linen. It is a natural staple fiber. And it is 100% flax, which is the fiber content. Fiber content, 100% flax. If it's 100%, you don't have to put that down. You can just put the name. Number two, handkerchief linen. Again, we mount the swatch. Label the number. Fabric name. Anchor Chief Linen, and it is a 100% flax. And again, it's a natural staple fiber. Three, Handkerchief Ramy, which is khaki colored is number three. Handkerchief linen. Uh, I'm sorry, Ramy. And the fiber content is 100% Ramy. And again, this is a natural staple fiber. As I look at the next line, it, see, it says C number 42. I ignore that. C 104. I ignore that. C 61. I ignore that. C 38. I ignore that. I then turn the page and go to number 4, which is Tessa silk. All right. And I'll mount the swatch. Okay. Now, in this particular instance, I have uh, in the filling direction a staple fiber 
and in the warp direction of filament fiber. So filling is staple and warp is filament. And it is 100% Tussa silk. which is just a different version of silk. It still comes from the silkworm, but it's not in a commercially production type thing. Number five is China silk. It's a very thin swatch, so be careful with it. Number five, China Silk, which is used a lot in linings. It is a natural filament fiber. And it is 100% silk. So I have C36. Again, I skip that at this point and I go directly to number six, which is pronounced file. So fabric name, file. And this again has um, warp yarn that is a filament. And a filling yarn that is a staple fiber. The fiber content of this is rayon, which is a man-made fiber. All right. Again, you're going to see a whole block here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I skip all those. And I go to the next page where I have swatch number seven. And I attach swatch number seven. The fabric name is Suplex, and you will notice that this is a registered name. The fiber content is nylon, and the yarn type is a synthetic filament microfiber. Okay, and again I skip number 120 and I go directly and I go to number 8 which is peach skin. So, number 8 called peach skin. Peach skin is 100% polyester. And it is a synthetic, synthetic filament microfiber. Number eight is just called a lining fabric. It will be used in lining coats, suits, pants, purses, etc. So number nine, lining fabric. It's a synthetic filament.
it's not a microfiber, and it is 100% polyester.